Welcome one and all inside the Globe Studios. My name is Dante Stanton and this is the Goshen News Weekend Wrap-Up presented by Globe TV. After a few weeks away, we're back with more of the local stories that you need to know. As always, all pieces presented in the Weekend Wrap-Up are originally reported by the Goshen News and rewritten for this TV format. In today's episode, we'll talk where the party majority stands at the Goshen City Council following Election Day. We'll learn more about a food pantry in Middlebury gearing up for the holiday season and much more. But first, before we get into all that, a familiar face is officially in office now in the city of Goshen. Temporary incumbent mayor Gina Lichty was elected to office on Tuesday and is the first woman to hold the position in an official capacity. Lichty beat out Republican candidate Benjamin Rogers by securing 54% of the vote. Lichty began her duties as mayor on June 16th after taking over for former mayor Jeremy Stutzman, who stepped down to move to the private sector. Lichty, a Goshen College graduate, says she appreciated the past several months as mayor, but is grateful that she's now been voted into the role by the public rather than a caucus. In his concession speech, Rogers commended Lichty, describing the overall process as a good, clean campaign. While local Republicans failed to capture enough votes to win over the mayoral position, they did manage to retain a 4-3 advantage on the Goshen City Council. First District Councilman Ronald Reeksecker, who retained his seat, commented that Republicans were hoping to win not only the mayoral race, but the position of clerk-treasurer as well. He did state, though, that Republicans were satisfied with keeping their majority position on the council. The first, second, and third district seats will remain in control of Republicans, while Democrats hold the fourth and fifth district, as well as an at-large bid. Despite the difference in political preferences between the council and the mayoral position, both sides have commented that cohesion has been frequent in the past, a practice that's expected to continue. There's an opportunity coming your way next week if you're in the charitable spirit. The Middlebury Food Pantry is asking for donations from the community for their Thanksgiving turkey drive. The program will start up on Monday, November 13th, which is also World Kindness Day. Donations of $25 will be focused on putting a Thanksgiving meal with all the trimmings on the tables of those in need this holiday season. If you can't donate on Monday, that's okay. Organizers say the food pantry is accepting Dropbox donations until November 18th. If you or anyone you know needs to be on the receiving end of that Thanksgiving meal, you can visit the pantry during normal working hours to receive a coupon with more information on how to get a box. And this isn't just limited to Middlebury residents or even Indiana residents for that matter. All that a meal box requires is a photo ID. With more than 250 families served in 2022, the pantry is aiming to help out more than 300 families this year. More information on the drive can be found online at GoshenNews.com. Saturday is an important date, Veterans Day, a holiday in which we honor those who have fought for our country in the armed forces. For the first time this weekend, the Humane Society of Elkhart County is set to host a special Veterans Day adoption event to celebrate. Anyone who shows a valid military ID will receive free annual vaccinations for the lifetime of the pet, waived adoption fees, and 50% off on essential leashes and collars. Humane Society is open from 9 a.m. to 4 for the event and adoptions are held on a first-come, first-served basis. The Humane Society is located at 54687 on County Road 19. That's going to do it for this week's edition of the Weekend Wrap-Up. Again, all stories presented during the show were originally reported by the Goshen News and rewritten for this video format. We hope you'll follow along with Globe TV and our other projects as well, which are available on our YouTube page at 911 The Globe, our website, globeradio.org, and our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, X, formerly Twitter, and the Globe Radio app. We hope you continue to make this show a part of your weekly routine as we release new episodes each Saturday. Thanks for watching the Weekend Wrap-Up. Until next time, I'm Don Sasten.